So welcome back everybody. So we have made it through our first two years. <laughs> oh God, I love you, I love you so much, I know, I know. Now, there's so much drool from, from all those kisses, but that's okay, you know, dog mom life, that's what we endure. <laughs> so we have definitely gone through a lot, haven't we? You're like, don't look at me. <laughs> through the first two years of Mr. Man's life. It definitely seems like it was just yesterday that I was holding this little dude. Well, he's not little anymore. And I hope it's been helpful that you guys have seen what it's like raising a cattle dog <laughs> after the first two years. And grant you, I've got a little bit more work to do with him on a couple of things, but um, hopefully you see how their craziness somewhat calms down <laughs> within that first two years. And, uh, and how if you work with them and train them, they you'll eventually get to where you need them to be. You know, I've gotten a, a little bit of criticism on, on raising Sully that I'm not hard enough on him and that I let him get away with too much. But you know what? I mean, can you blame me? I mean, that dog's face, like, I think anybody would cave to him a little bit. It's hard to say no to his face. He's got one of the most handsomest handsomest, that's a word, right? Faces I've ever seen on a cattle dog. And another reason I let him get away with stuff and maybe even let some of my other dogs get away with things is they're not here with us for very long. You know, their time with us is very limited. So if I can let them just be who they are to a point, you know, I'm fine with that. You know, you always hear me say personality plays a part in raising a dog. And that is definitely true when it comes to cattle dogs. Like there's just, there's some things you're not going to train out of them. For example, Sully's uh, bratty behavior. I mean, he definitely has that brat, I want it all to myself attitude, and he's always been that way. I mean, he still screams at the girls if they're playing with a toy that he wants. To Are you upset she stole your <laughs> Clea, did you steal his toy? She's like, yeah, so what? <laughs> Hi, woo-woo. Sully, you have other toys, honey. You have other toys. <laughs> You're a brat. <laughs> You're a little brat, but we love you. <laughs> and he has done that since day one. Like, he's always have that personality trait. <laughs> You're throwing a fit. Oh my gosh. And I have been trying to still teach him how to share better. Um, he's actually starting to let the girls like play with the the flirt pole while he goes and plays with the chuck it. So he's he's starting to get that he doesn't need to be so possessive, but he still hoards his toys upstairs in our office like like a dragon. That's just that's who he is and I'm not I don't have a problem with that. It's not an aggression. It's just he's the spoiled baby brat of the family. His reactivity training you know, that is, I, I'm pr happy of where we got him. He will still once in a while go after a tire. It's very rare, but it does happen. So we're probably like 99.5% there when it comes to him leaving it alone. But, it, you know, it's also, those moments I notice is when I don't catch him. It, he gets it in his head that, oh, I'm going to go do it, and he does it, you know. But it, I don't catch him at the right moment. That that's on That's on me. It's my fault not catching it to say the command, leave it in time. But you know, when I say leave it and stuff, he does perfectly fine. You guys have seen how well he does on walks and how well he does out in public. He will still even go after a lawnmower and try to bite the wheels on that, except when I'm trying to record it, then he decides not to show what he does to the lawnmower. But thankfully he only does that to the lawnmower when it's actually stopped. He doesn't do that um, while I'm actually mowing. And you know, the dog reactivity, the past couple of weeks, we've actually had quite a few dogs charge at us, and I have been extremely impressed with how he handled the small dogs. He actually um, doesn't react when they come up. Um, he will give warning oofs at them, and if they don't back off, then he starts getting a little bit more tense, but he doesn't go into an attack aggressive mode. 
We still need to work with him on bigger dogs. He still does really good in public when it comes to not reacting to people at a distance or, at, or you know, if we go to the pet store or any place else if he sees another dog at those places, he doesn't have any reaction to it. The problem I am having, which this has been going on for a while now, I, I'm pretty sure I've mentioned it in another video, is that his protectiveness of the bubble. So when he was really little and we were going for walks, he would go up to people, you know, he would be so excited about people petting him and everything. And the older he got, the less he was okay with people just randomly approaching him and touching him. So I really have to watch when people come into a certain distance of our crew and because he will go into protective mode. I have gotten him to sit and stay calm while I'm talking to my neighbors and things like that. So but it's, it's always when they stand up. If they stand up or if they start coming towards us and they're within like, I think once they hit like seven feet distance from us, that's when he goes into alert mode of, I have to protect my, my family. And uh, that's not necessarily a bad thing, um, but it is a bad thing when you tell people to back off and they don't listen. But um, he still takes cookies okay from everybody. The only problem is if people try to pet his head immediately after the cookie, he will snap. He will give them a warning ground snap. And I tell people that you can give him a cookie, but don't try to pet him because he hasn't built that trust with them. He's very much, I need to build something with you to let you pet me. There's only a couple people he will actually still let pet in public now. So I, I'm, on, I'm on the fence still if he should be muzzled all the time or not, but... Um, that's not the discussion of today's video so but um because for me if i'm telling you to back off from my dog that's on you if you get bit but and that's also what the law states <laughs> but anyway he definitely fits the breed's description of how protective he is and and on that note when it comes to my house you know we are not as social as we used to be um and my husband's never been very social he's definitely the hermit of uh, our crew but you know, we used to have a lot of friends come over. We used to have a lot of family. You know, all that has changed a lot within the last three years. And um, I don't know if I'm ever going to get him okay with people coming in the house. And I'm, at this point, okay with that. I'm not going to be too pressed about that. Because the way our neighborhood's going and, you know, things like that, I don't mind having a dog that is protective of his home like that. Um, my Lou was very protective of his house, too. I could not have him around any maintenance guy or anything that would come into the house, you know, so I'm, I'm fine with having a boy that does that again. And don't get me wrong, my girls are, are, are protective too of the house, just they don't take it to the extreme Sully does. If they realize you're a friend or family, you know, they'll calm down. He won't. Um, so I still want to try to work with him with at least my best friend. If I can get him okay with at least her, I'd be okay with that. And I know that's my own fault that he is not better with the house because well, it's not just my fault. I will blame the other people I kept inviting over that refused to see him too. Because I remember constantly complaining and, you know, just bitching that nobody was coming to see Sully. Like, I literally scheduled appointments for people to meet my girls. That's why my girls were so good about people coming to the house. They literally had two to three appointments, like, socially with strangers, <laughs> you know, as they were growing up the first six months of their life. And Sully didn't have that. And I knew it was going to happen. I knew he would get into that overprotective fear. Because that's what it is. It's, it's I'm afraid of who's in my house because I don't know this person. I don't trust them, you know, and all that stuff. But I'm fine with it. You know, he does fine in his crate. He does fine if I lock him up in our bedroom while we have a visitor over, which we've only had like two recently. And he actually stayed quiet the last two times um, when he was locked up. So that's, I'm hoping with a little bit more age, he can at least stay a little bit calmer. But, you know, it's not just cattle dogs that have to be locked up from strangers coming into the home. We have relatives who have their dogs locked up when we come over because they just don't do well with strangers in their house, no matter how much practice you do. But I'm extremely happy with the progress we're at with him. Like, I couldn't ask for a better dog. He is extremely intelligent. He's very brave. He is comical. I mean... He does the cutest stuff. He makes the cutest noises, even though he is the loudest cattle dog I've ever known. <laughs> and I wish he would tone it down just a little bit because he gets too excited and scream barks at everything. And if we don't hurry quickly enough to go outside, he will start yell barking at us like, hurry up guys, you know, and it's like, just calm it down, dog. He is such a good fit for us. And the fact that he is like 
the best camper and loves to go out on adventures with mama like he's just an amazing dog and i am very very blessed and lucky to have him along with my other two and uh you know he's still filled with a lot of puppiness and uh some of that i hope doesn't go away like his raindrop uh snaps you know where he catches all the raindrops i'm very glad he didn't stop doing that as a puppy i was really worried all his kangaroo jumps and his you know, obsession with rain would go away with age, but it hasn't. And I know he's going to calm down a little bit more by the time he's three, but, um, I mean, cow dogs never really calm down, but you know what I mean? He, he'll have a little bit more maturity and, uh, but I'm happy with where he's at. You know, he doesn't bite me or, well, he did bite me for a while. After Silver passed, he bit me. He actually bit me a couple times in the face and on the hand. I think, I think that was mostly just him being upset and grieving because it only lasted for like two weeks. But I still have, you know, battle scars from when he was a puppy, you know, and uh, I still once in a while get a bruise because he is like a bull in a china shop that just thinks he can jump and land on you and, and everything's fine. And it's, it's like, no, I think you broke a rib, kid, you know? I'm trying to think if there's anything else I need to say, but like, yeah, he's, he's just amazing and, uh, you know, we made it and <laughs> we made it to two years. I guess one more thing to maybe add. I know a lot of people have made comments recently about how um, they need to make sure their dog gets trained this way. I'm not 100% with uh, that mentality that you need to make sure your dog is okay at a dog park and you need to make sure they can go to daycare and you need to make sure they can go through all these things in life. No, you don't. Like you need them to be happy and with you that's that's the main thing i think people focus too much on um they need to be perfect at everything and uh if that's the case all of us would be perfect and none of us are perfect whatsoever for the people that are getting bashed by other people about you need to make sure your dog you know is okay with strangers in your house no you don't you just need to make sure your dog is safe and that they're safe when they visit. Uh, this probably could be a topic for a whole other video, but my, my point is, is that this is a tough working breed, and as long as you're giving them mental and physical exercise and keeping them happy, that's, that's my, that's what I think is mainly important. I don't think it's extremely important to make sure they're okay with everything, because God knows I'm not okay with everything. <laughs> like, like forcing them to be social in a dog park is like forcing me in an ocean like scuba diving that's just never going to happen but yeah we did it we uh we raised another cattle dog successfully <laughs> so <laughs> i got through it once again <laughs> so you guys you can do it too but anyway guys thank you as always for watching remember to click like and subscribe and comment down below help the algorithm because we're struggling here <laughs> but uh take care everyone and we'll see you in the next one bye Oh yeah, you tell him. <laughs> you tell him. Yeah, you tell him, Sully. You tell him. <laughs>